In Sri Lanka, it was a day of violence today. At least five people were killed, more than 190 injured in a wave of violence. These clashes between Rajapaksa supporters and the anti-government demonstrators. Currently, authorities have imposed an indefinite curfew across the country. The military has been called in to contain the violence and the situation is getting out of hand. Let's uh, get you up to speed with the latest coming in. On your screen are three residences of Mahinda Rajapaksa. All of them are under attack. The one in Colombo is surrounded by protesters who rammed barricades into the gates of the residence. The other two, located in other parts of the country, were set on fire. In another incident, a ruling party lawmaker shot dead an anti-government protester and then took his own life during the clashes. Amara Kirti Atukarala opened fire and critically injured two people. These were protesters who were blocking his car in the town of Mithimbua. One of the victims has already succumbed to his injuries. Opposition MP Sajid Premadasa also came under attack. He was trying to move into the area after the clashes, but he was attacked by a huge mob. The visuals of the attack on your screen. His security staff later bundled him into a car, driving off from the scene. Mobs also attacked the controversial Rajapaksa Museum. This museum is located in the ruling family's ancestral village of Medamolana. It was constructed in 2014 when Mahinda was president. Two wax statues of the Rajapaksa parents were flattened and the building was trashed. The house of another MP, Sanat Nisanta, was also set on fire. He was the one who led a mob to attack the protesters in one part. Dozens of buses were also torched or damaged across the country. These buses were used by the Rajapaksa supporters to travel to Colombo. Three pickup trucks were also pushed into a lake. The violence started when the Rajapaksa supporters attacked anti-government protesters. Most of these supporters were buzzed in from the rural areas. They chanted pro-Rajapaksa slogans. They attacked unarmed protesters who were outside the president's house. The police also fired tear gas and water cannons at the protesters. Now the demonstrators who have been protesting peacefully since the 9th of April have started retaliating across the country. With us on the broadcast is Sri Lankan MP Shanakyam Rasamanikam from Colombo. Thanks very much for being here with us. Uh, it's been a day of violent clashes. The tensions continuing to escalate on the ground. The military has been called in now. If you can uh, give us a better sense of the situation on the ground as of now. Uh, well, uh, the country is in a state of anarchy at the moment. Uh, things have uh, gotten out of hand. And uh, for about one month, uh, individuals and citizens of Sri Lanka have been protesting, demanding the resignation of uh, Gotabe Rajapaksha, uh, his brother Mahindra Rajapaksha, along with all their family members. Uh, this led due to the economic crisis and the poor management of the finances in the country. However, on uh, Friday uh, last week, 
at the uh, adjournment of parliament, uh, President Gotabe Rajapaksha declared uh, a state of emergency in the country. And uh, we did look at uh, the state of emergency declaration uh, as a worrying sign of uh, things to come. And, uh, and then President Prime Minister Mahindra Rajapaksha was tipped off to uh, step down today. And uh, with all this in the backdrop, uh, Mahindra Rajapaksha, along with his uh, supporters, former cabinet ministers and fellow MPs, uh, brought in a number of uh, thousands of people or hundreds of people in buses, like you just mentioned, uh, from rural uh, Sri Lanka. And now evidence has come out that some of these uh, people were brought into Colombo, were compelled to uh, come to Colombo under the threat of uh, cutting off their social security payments, etc., by the local MPs. And uh, we, we saw earlier today at Temple Trees, which is the official residence of the Prime Minister, uh, ministers, former cabinet ministers uh, who were in support of Mahindra Rajapaksha were seen uh, instigating violence, uh, were seen making uh, very aggressive speeches, uh, you know, uh, instigating violence against the protesters who were just a few uh, hundred meters away from the Prime Minister's residence and op opposite the Prime Minister's house. And uh, a few minutes later, uh, we could see that the mobs that were brought in uh, from different parts of the country were set out. They were unleashed uh, on the general public who were just peaceful protesters who were demanding that Rajapaksha resigns. And for the last 30 days, there's not even a single case of violence reported uh, within the country when thousands of people are protesting. And uh, once the state unleashed its uh, uh, supporters, uh, it's purely state terrorism, uh, state unleashed their supporters on innocent, un unarmed civilians who were beaten, who were, um, who were beaten, and there, there was a lot of bloodshed in the morning. All the protesters' sites were destroyed, and uh, and then uh, an anti anti government uh, protesters just rounded up all the protests, all the protesters who came from outside Colombo, and uh, and and now the country has just lost control. And I don't think anybody's in control right now. Uh, not just a few MPs, uh, many uh, members of parliament from the government have had their houses burnt down, have had their offices burnt down, have had their vehicles burnt down, and most of them seem to be in makeshift places. So uh, this is a worrying, this is a very, very worrying uh, sign for the country. All right, let me ask you uh, for your assessment of uh, the politics that we've seen playing out over the last few hours and days. Now, the resignation of the Prime Minister, would you say that's enough? How would this help uh, solve uh, the urgent need to tackle the economic crisis? And also, what do you make of what really happened today as far as that uh, um, resignation, the meeting uh, as well that uh, came before that is concerned? Well, uh, the resignation, uh, maybe I, I, I felt that resignation was uh, forced out of Mahindra Adipaksha. Uh, it didn't happen by choice. His younger brother uh, forced him to uh, give his resignation in today. And, uh, and, and, and the call is for president to resign because Sri Lanka is governed by uh, an executive president. The parliament is not as powerful as uh, the president because the president took over powers of the parliament under him with the 20th Amendment to the Constitution. And uh, people are not going to stop protesting. It's only going to intensify. Unfortunately, it's going to, I'm hoping that it will not be violent. Uh, because uh, right now, in a country where there is a financial crisis, we don't even have a minister in charge of finance. Because when the prime minister resigns, automatically the entire cabinet uh, cabinet is not valid anymore as well. So a country that is uh, severely hampered by the economic crisis. We saw the uh, finance minister say in parliament that uh, he is the night watchman. He's doing the finance minister role as a night watchman, just like making comparisons to a night watchman in a cricket match. And uh, he even uh, went on to say that our reserves are below $50 million. So uh, right now, uh, we, we are told that there will be no gas uh, for domestic use for the next three weeks. So people who live in urban areas will have no way of cooking their meals, and it's only going to increase the agitations. And we are told that uh, the diesel supply uh, will be interrupted because uh, the Kalanik is uh, one of the, uh, one of the uh, rather the Norachola power plant, which uh, generates power from coal, uh, is down uh, with some repair, so we are f we are running on f uh, electricity uh, that is being given through generators. So if there is all the diesel that's available is diverted to that, there'll be no diesel for the consumption of the public. So this is going to increase agitation. This is going to be even more worrying. 
Uh, therefore, uh, even if even if uh, Prime Minister's resignation has happened, it has come uh, one month too late. And I feel that the Prime Minister is going out in colours. If he's if he's going down, he's taking the country and his family and the entire Parliament and the capital along with him. Because right now, uh, people uh, are protesting. It doesn't matter if you're from the government or the opposition. The anger is just uh, is just towards anyone and everybody on the streets. We hear that uh, people are stopping vehicles to check if there are any government uh, supporters. And these are not the protesters who were peacefully protesting a month ago uh, for the last month. These are these seem to be very angry mobs so and media persons have said that they have not been able to cover events also because they are being told to turn their cameras off because uh, the people are afraid of uh, uh, repercussions later if they are caught on camera so right now as we speak uh, anything and everything could be happening in the country like you uh, showed the videos of presidents and prime ministers parents ancestral house being burnt down we are not sure what else is being burnt down right now right and those uh, visuals of those residences uh, on uh, our screen right now. Uh, we're going to leave it there for the moment. Shanikam Rasamanikam, appreciate very much joining us on the broadcast and helping us better understand what things on the ground are looking like as of now. Thank you. We are now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the news on the move.